Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you to check out my wife's uh, business, Ashira Clips. She's an independent stylist for Lila Rose and sells hairpins, hair clips, and hair bands, as well as other hair accessories with a wide variety of different designs, as well as sizes to meet the needs and taste of a wide variety of different women. You can go to Lila Rose dot biz slash ashira that's l i l a l a rose dot biz slash ashira s h i r a during the month of august if you make a purchase of forty dollars or more you'll receive a free uh, bobby pin if you make a purchase of fifty dollars or more you'll get two free bobby pins if you're interested you may also want to go by and check out the site on August 14th at 7 a.m. or after 7 a.m. Pacific time. They'll be releasing the new Flexi Flip with six different designs as well as a special new release. Uh, be sure and check it all out at lilarose.biz slash ashira. That's L-I-L-L-A rose dot biz slash ashira S-H-I-R-A. Well, now we're going to talk a little bit about Ned Weaver, the star of uh, Dick Tracy at this point. Weaver was actually a very talented uh, person, not only as an actor, he was also a composer who wrote things uh, that were used by uh, Billy Rose, among others. His origin was on stage, but like many New York actors, he found radio a great uh, sustainer. He was best known for a couple of things. One is uh, taking over the role of Bulldog Drummond, and then just all of the work that he did in soap operas, uh, particularly on Laura Lawton and young uh, Witter Brown. New York City was really huge as a source for all of the soaps, with so many major ones coming uh, from New York. Although, of course, he worked on many other shows. You know, the type of things, anything that you really could work on from New York, uh, that was the type of thing that he ended up doing. With that said, let's get into today's episodes of Dick Tracy. Uh, the uh, titles are Mystery in the Hotel and Dick Shot in the Leg. Original air dates, February 10th and February 11th, 1938. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two tasty, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy adventure. And there's the sound of the big guns in the Quaker plant, where they're making puffed wheat and puffed rice for the thousands of happy families who enjoy something specially good for breakfast every day. You know, breakfast is a very important meal. It follows the longest stretch between meals and comes just before you start your active day. That calls for lots of real food energy, and that in turn calls for nourishing puffed wheat and puffed rice. That's why they're shot from guns. A special Quaker process explodes each grain of wheat and rice to eight times its normal size. The tiny, hard-to-digest food cells are unlocked for you so that you can use their trigger-fast food energy easily and quickly. So have Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast often. Try them turn about. Puffed wheat one day, puffed rice the next. You know, there's a good idea for you to tell mother about. She's always trying to give you and dad something different that you really enjoy and it's especially good for you, too. Well, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, you have two delicious flavors 
for a taste variety that the whole family goes for. So tell Mother about it and ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. And then you can change flavors every day and still be getting the trigger-fast food energy you need to be as quick in thought and action as Dick Tracy is. And remember, patrol members, there's another secret code message for you at the end of today's program. So be sure you have your pencil, paper, and secret code book ready. An unknown assailant called the man with the yellow face has threatened the life of the well-known Egyptologist Dryden Small. Yesterday, we heard how Dick had received a code message from Pat, who was walking on Deck A with Dryden Small. As Dick and the ship's captain hurried to Deck A, someone cried, Man overboard! It seems Pat, fighting hand-to-hand with the man with the yellow face, had been thrown overboard. The brave and courageous detective leaped over the side after his friend. Will he save him, or will he too meet death in the black waters of the ocean? Get my boat more on the side. All right, sir. Station four. Station four. Yes, this is just one enough to pass. Hey, what? Come along, man. We've got to get that lifeboat over the side at once. Be glad, no, sir. Good, good. Come along. Come along. Is he the man there? Did he keep a level in Chino Hills? Watch the men, smartly. There are two men overboard. Three men Couple of those ducks far enough. And the old men. Good luck, friends. Good luck. You've got to bring them back. Uh, thank goodness they're keeping their searchlights going. Right, sir. I don't see. Hold on, sir. There's something to port. Two points from the port bow, sir. This way. Help. Help. Tracy and Pat. Pull out, men. Right, sir. Inside of them. Eve away, there. Eve, I Eve. Stand by in the bow, bosun. They open board. Aye, aye, sir. Oars. Yeah. All right, Mr. Tracy. We've got you, sir. We've got you. Take Pat. He's out. Right, sir. Right. Pull him in, boys. Pull him in. Uh, now, lend the man. Here we are. Uh, all right. You're next, Mr. Tracy. Grab hold, sir. Grab hold. Yeah. Uh, up you come, sir. Up you come. Over. Uh, thanks. There we are. Uh, oh, that what it's called. How's Pat? Hey, you'll be all right, Tracy. He's suffering from cold and shock, most likely. But we'll get him back to the ship at once. And pull away together. Screw. 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 Well, Dick, I guess I owe my life to you once again. Someone else would have pulled you out if I hadn't been there, Pat. Ah, uh, but no one else did. That's the point. Now that you're able to talk, Pat, tell me, what happened up there on deck? Well, Small and I noticed someone whom we took to be the man with the yellow face. Uh-huh. I immediately sent you that message asking you to come up on deck. Well, after the steward left with the message, Small and I walked aft along deck A, and suddenly a figure slipped out of the shadows. He was honest before I could get set. Yeah. He knocked Small to the deck, and then I grappled with him. Dick, I, I've never met anyone so powerful in all my life. I couldn't do a thing against him. He was so strong that he actually picked me up bodily and heaved me overboard. Hmm. I don't suppose you got a good look at him, Pat. No, Dick, I, I didn't. Everything happened so quickly. Man, Dryden Small, he knows why he's being hounded, Pat. He knows what the man with the yellow face is after. And I'm convinced he also knows who the man with the yellow face is. Well, why don't we just wash our hands of the whole matter, Dick? Oh, you know we can't do that, Pat, even though I told Small I would. But something I can do, I can have this out with Dryden Small. So far, we've managed to protect him, but it can't go on this way. We've got to make that fellow realize that the closer we get to America the more desperate our adversaries will become. Come on, we might as well have this out right now. Yeah, but the doctor said he was sleeping. I can't help that. Well, I wonder who that is. Come in. Well, Captain, come in. I don't mean to disturb you, Mr. Tracy, but something terrible has happened. Well, what is it, Captain? The thing I've been dreading has come at last. You recall earlier this evening, I spoke of one of the crew being found unconscious in the storage room. He was a man with a weak heart, I think. Yes, yes, I remember. He's the man who claimed to have seen a figure standing in the door of the storage room. Yes, well, he insisted on going on with his work in the storage room. He's had another shock, Tracy. One that may be fatal. Another heart attack? Yes. From what I know, I, I'm convinced he was scared into his present state. I see. Where's the victim now? He's still down in the storeroom. The doctor is giving him first aid, trying to revive him. Pat, you stay with Dryden Small. Yeah? I'm going down to that storage room with the captain. Those two things may be linked up. I don't know how, but they may be. Okay, Dick. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Here, uh, take my gun. You may need it since you lost yours overboard. All right, thanks. And don't let Small out of your sight. Oh, I won't. Come along, Captain. I, what you say is true. We may have to make new plans at once to trap the man we're looking for. Well, 
Well, Doctor? Uh, he's still in the deep coma, Captain. I haven't been able to do a thing for him. I'm afraid he must be taken to the ship's hospital. Oh, oh, very well, Doctor, very well. I've already sent for stretcher. Splendid. Give him the best of care. I tell you, Tracy, it, it was something the man saw. Captain, may I suggest that your men make a thorough search of the hole at once, especially the storage room? I've already seen to that, Tracy. You told me this evening about the strange apparition this man saw. It may certainly have something to do with it. Perhaps it was the man with the yellow face. By the way, what, what's that thing over there? You that? <laughs> That's the mummy case, dried and small, is bringing back to America. I believe it contains the mummy of Tadonkamu's second son. Frankly, Tracy, I'd feel much happier if Tadonkamu never had a second son. Yes. A mummified passenger isn't altogether pleasant. Uh, what I'm worried about is the effect of all this on the crew, Tracy. They talk a great deal. Too much, perhaps. Rumors get around, you know. Before you know it, your ship has a bad name. I... I don't like it. I can well understand that. Ah, here comes the mate. Have you found anything? No, nothing, sir. Not a thing. The men are still going over everything, though, no, just to be sure. Ah, thank you. Well, Tracy, there doesn't seem to be much either of us can do here. Would you care to join me in my cabin? A little coffee, perhaps? Some sandwiches? Yes, I'll enjoy it very much. But I feel the most important place for me to be right now is back in Dryden Small's cabin. All right, I'll have the coffee sent there. Hey, Jack, sir. This way, Captain. Right in the small stateroom is down this way. Yes. You know, Tracy, it certainly is reassuring to have you on board this trip. I'd hate to have all these bizarre things happening without you here to help clear them up. Well, I haven't cleared them up, Captain. No, but I know your reputation. I have absolute confidence in you, Tracy. Well, thank you. This is really one of the most puzzling cases I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. I don't believe I ever had so little of a tangible nature to work with. There's so many things I'd like to know... I'd give a great deal, for instance, to know what the black pearl of Osteris is and where it is. I'd like to know why the man with the yellow face is so anxious to get a hold of it. To make it brief, Captain, I, I'd like to know what it's all about. Mm, that is all that, eh? Well, I'll say this, Tracy. I'll be a very much relieved man when this ship docks at New York. I dare say. Well, here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat must be in the bedroom. Yes, he, uh... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Voice, strange voice. Listen. No desire to discuss this matter with you at any length. All I ask from you is that you tell me where the black pearl is. The black pearl of Osiris. I don't know, I tell you. I don't even know what you're talking about. Your friend, Ryden Small, practiced the same deception. He, too, pretended ignorance of the black pearl of Osiris. You see what has happened to him. The same thing will happen to you. This pearl-handled revolver of his may not be very impressive looking, but I rather think if it is well aimed and uh, skillfully handled, it can be deadly indeed. Now listen, I'm telling you. You that will I... tell me nothing but what I want to know. Where is the black pearl of Osiris? Answer you, white devil, or it will be the worse for you. Good heavens, Tracy! What what's going on in there? It's evident that Pat's on the spot. I've never heard that voice before, but I'll bet it's the man with the yellow face. What can we do? Have you a gun? No, I haven't. Neither have I. I gave mine to Pat. I can get one, though. No, there's no time. We've got to work quickly. You can't do anything against that man without a gun. Time grows short, my friend. Answer me quickly. I refuse to waste further words with you. Now, listen. I'm telling you the truth. Why should I lie to you? I don't know where the black pearl you're talking about is. This little pearl-handled revolver is about to speak. I do not think you would care to hear its voice. No, I tell you, you've got me all wrong. I don't know any more about that black pearl than you do. Well, Tracy does. He tried to get dry and small to tell us, but he wouldn't. Very well, my friend. I see you are not only stubborn, but reckless of your life. And so it Ready, becomes Captain. necessary anything, for me to... What are you going to do? Pull a bluff, Captain. Pull a bluff. Kill you. And believe me, my friend, you could have avoided it if you had wanted to. However, you forced my hand... And so... Dick! Dick! There you are. Drop that gun or I'll drop you. Who is the man with the yellow face? And will Tracy succeed in bluffing him? What is the mystery of the black pearl of Osiris? We'll soon know. But now the makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, those two delicious nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend the meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. And here's Dick Tracy, Jr., your patrol president now. 
The 21st meeting will now come to order. And today I have another secret code message for you patrol members. So get your pencil and paper ready, fellows and girls. You know, one reason why we're sending you these secret messages every day is that Dick Tracy wants you to be able to use the code as easily and as quickly as he does. That's important. And that's why you should send at least one code message to every patrol member you know every day. That's the way to get good at it, and it's a lot of fun. But now, get ready for today's secret message from Dick Tracy. Here it is. It's football. 10, 11, 7, 17, 11, 26. 17, 9, 12, 25. 5, 17, 6, 15. 11, 25, 13, 3, 26. Did you get it? Repeat it, Junior, to make sure. Okay. Here you are. It's football. 10, 11, 7, 17, 11, 26. 17, 9, 12, 25. 5, 17, 6, 15. 11, 25, 13, 3, 26. And remember, fellows and girls, that's a real message from Dick Tracy to you. Follow those instructions because something very important is about to happen. And if you or any of your friends are missing all the fun we're having... Tell them how to join the patrol right away. You know, you just mail two Quaker Puff Tweet or Quaker Puff Rice box tops or one of each with your name and address to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. And you're a full-fledged member. You get the secret code book, the Dick Tracy Pledge, and the patrol member's badge. And don't forget to form your own active Dick Tracy patrol. It tells you how to in the secret code book. And then you're a patrol leader, and Dick Tracy sends you the special patrol leader's badge to wear with your regular badge. And say, patrol members, have you been promoted to the rank of sergeant or lieutenant yet? It's a real honor to wear one of those officer's badges, you know. Look it up in your code book and start now to win your promotion. Show Dick Tracy the kind of stuff you're made of. There go the big guns to remind you that Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually shot from guns to give you lots of trigger-fast energy in two different delicious cereals that thousands enjoy every day. If there isn't any puffed wheat or puffed rice in your pantry now... Be sure to ask Mother to order some for you at the grocer's. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the two tempting, delicious, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Hear the big guns? That's the way they sound when puffed wheat and puffed rice are shot from guns in the Quaker plant. Remember that sound the next time you sit down to a big dish of crisp, crunchy puffed wheat or puffed rice for breakfast. You see, when the nourishing grains of wheat and rice are shot from the big guns, they're actually exploded to eight times their normal size. Each tiny, hard-to-digest food cell is unlocked, and that's why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are so specially easy to digest, why you get their trigger-fast food energy so quickly and easily. And remember, patrol members, if you want to be strong, healthy, and alert like Dick Tracy is, you need lots of that same kind of food energy. So join the thousands of happy puffed wheat and puffed rice fans who enjoy puffed wheat one day and puffed rice the next. That gives you a delightful taste variety that mother and dad enjoy too. So tell mother about those two swell flavors and ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's for you. And be sure to have your pencil and paper ready for a secret code message from Dick Tracy. Aboard the liner Marvania, bound for America, Dick Tracy and Pat have been trying to protect a certain well-known Egyptologist named Dryden Small, 
from an unknown enemy called the Man with the Yellow Face. Yesterday, we learned how one of the crew in the hold of the ship had been frightened by a strange apparition. Returning from the investigation, Dick overheard the Man with the Yellow Face threatening to kill Pat, whom he had left with Dryden Small. Tracy had no gun with him, so he was forced to try to bluff the man with the yellow face into believing he did have one. Will he succeed? Whoever you are, drop that gun or I'll drop you. Ah, Mr. Tracy. Uh, Come in, won't you? I've got you covered, so don't try anything. Put down that gun. Thank you. No. This little pearl-handled revolver belongs to Dryden Small. A dangerous little toy, but rather attractive. So I prefer to keep it. Who are you? What's your name? I believe I have been called the man with a yellow face. Rather an unpleasant, distressing name. I don't like it. My real name, and I hope that you will use it henceforward, gentlemen, is Humi Batik. Egyptian, huh? That is right. Dick, he wounded Dryden Small. He knifed him before I could get in here. I heard Small cry out. It was in self-defense. You see, Mr. Tracy, he was indiscreet enough to withhold something from me. Something I wanted very badly. The Black Pearl of Osiris. Ah, you know. You wounded Small because he wouldn't tell you where it was. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris? Why have you been following Small to get it? That gun you are holding in your pocket, if you actually are holding a gun there, Mr. Tracy, compels me to answer more or less. As I have said, my name is Humi Batik. I am the high priest of the cult of Osiris, a secret group dedicated to the worship of that ancient god. And what about the Black Pearl? Has it some religious significance? Uh, It has indeed. The Black Pearl is a very small pearl. But as you know, Black Pearls are rare and therefore are of considerable value. Aside from its value in money, however, the Black Pearl of Osiris is priceless in our eyes, for it is really the heart of Osiris. How can a pearl black or white be anybody's heart? Oh, you interpret my remark too literally, Mr. Patton. Many, many hundreds of years ago, a statue of Osiris was molded from gold with eyes of diamonds. When it was erected, it was decided that the statue must have a heart, and it must be something unusual, something worthy of that incredibly beautiful statue. Tutankhamal, the pharaoh of that time, had in his possession a small but perfect black pearl, and he gave this to the temple to be used as the heart of Osiris. I'm beginning to understand. That statue wasn't by any chance placed in Tutankhamul's tomb when he died, was it? Mr. Tracy, I bow to you. Yes, the statue was placed there. For hundreds of years, it was safe. Then came this infidel and stole the black pearl. But we knew, we who have guarded it for centuries, we knew that the heart of Osiris had been taken and that it must be returned at all costs. I have found it necessary to employ force, a thing I detest. But in my heart, I know that Osiris will forgive me, for I did it for him. Well, perhaps Osiris will, Batik. Undoubtedly, you're aware of the fact that there is another law here on Earth which meets out its own justice. So... No, no, no. Do not move toward me, I caution you. Believe me, I will gladly give myself over to you after I have returned the pearl. But I have not the black pearl. And until I do have it, you cannot have me. I'm afraid you're mistaken about that. Believe me, I sympathize with you, but... It is not your sympathy I want. It is the black pearl of Osiris. That is what I want, and that is what I will have. Put down that gun, Batik. You cannot frighten me. I am not sure whether you have a gun there in your pocket or not. But if you have, you had better begin firing it now, because... Look out, sir. He's aiming at the light. Guard that door, Captain. Captain. The door, Captain. Don't let him get out. Uh, Go. Dick. Dick, you're hurt. You're hurt. Go, go, go. Out of my way, Captain. All right. After him, for heaven's sake, don't let him get away. Oh, my leg. I can't stand on it. Go after him. Don't let him get away. Yes, and by the Lord Harry Tracy, I'll have the whole crew out to look for him. Does that hurt, Mr. Tracy? A little, Doctor. Not much. Not much, huh? I admire your nerves, sir, but you can't tell me that you aren't experiencing intense pain. I have thrown for bullets before. Well, you, you have to get it out, don't you? Yes, but I'm not so sure that I can. That thigh of yours ought to be x-rayed to find out the exact location of the bullet. 
The bullet must be a very small one to judge from the wound. Yeah, it was a very small revolver. Small pearl handle, one belonging to Dryden Small. Ah, yes, Mr. Small. I treated him for a few knife wounds an hour ago. He'll be laid up for a long time. Tracy, I don't like that man. He deserved everything he got. Huh. That hurt you, didn't it? No, no. Please go on. Yeah. The crew are searching for Hobie Batik, are they, Pat? Yeah, every available man. They'll find him, too. I wonder. It's clever, that Egyptian. They've searched for him before and couldn't find him. That's all right. All right, Doctor. Pat, I'm afraid our Egyptian friend is clever enough to find a safe place to hide. I wish I could be out with a crew hunting for him. What about that black pearl, Dick? The Egyptian seems sure dried and small headed. Have you any idea where it might be? No, Pat, I haven't. I can't help thinking that if only I'd known about this before. Dried and small had told me the whole story. All this might have been avoided. That would have meant telling you that he stole the pearl of Osiris. Yeah. You always suspected him, didn't you? Well, I thought he was dishonest and evasive, but I didn't know anything definite. Mr. Tracy. Yes, sir. I'm not going to probe for that bullet anymore. It's useless. Oh. You have to wait until we dock tomorrow, go to a doctor immediately, and have it x-rayed. Unfortunately, we have no facilities for x-ray on board. I see. All right, doctor, I'll do that. Now, bandage it up. I think you'll be able to get around. All right. Thank you, doctor. Thanks very much. No luck as yet, Captain? Oh, none, Tracy, none. My men are searching the boat, but there doesn't seem to be much chance of finding Mr. Batik. As you say, he's probably chosen the one place where we wouldn't think of looking. Yes. The one place where we wouldn't think of looking. I wonder what that might be. Uh, if I knew, I could save the crew a lot of trouble. But I can promise you this, Tracy. He won't get off the boat when we dock tomorrow without being caught. I'll see to that. Yes? I wonder, Captain. I wonder. I've been watching the passengers go down the gangplank, Dick. So far, I haven't seen anyone resembling Batik. No, neither have I, Pat. But he's going to try to get off this boat. You can depend on that. We have every gangplank guarded. Hey, Dick! Junior! Hey. Well, old man, I'm glad to see you. Oh, gosh, am I glad to see you, Dick. Oh, hello, Pat. Oh, thanks. Oh, Pat. That's <laughs> okay, kid. I know when Dick's around, no one else exists. <laughs> Tell me, Junior, how's the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol going? We got lots of members? Boy, I'll say we have. Hey, what are you looking for? Oh, um, a friend of ours, Junior. We thought he might be getting off the boat. Well, some gangster, I'll bet. Long that time, youngster. See anyone, Pat? No, I just thought for a minute that it isn't him. Hey, who are you looking for, anyway? An Egyptian named Humi Batik. He's been hiding on boat. Wounded a man. He says he did it in self-defense. We've got to get him. Hey, Dick. Are you limping? Well, he was shot, Junior. Shot by the Egyptian, huh? Yeah. Say, Dick, is it bad? No, no, no. It's all right, Junior. Oh, Captain. Hello there, Tracy. Any luck? No, none as yet. Well, I hope he hasn't got past us. But I don't see how he could. I've got men stationed all over the place. Humi Batik isn't hard to recognize with that yellow face of his. There are two things that puzzle me, Captain. Mm-hmm. Where is Humi Batik hiding, and where is the Black Pearl? I searched the small effects thoroughly and couldn't find it. Well, I'd give a good deal to know the answers to those questions myself. Say, Dick, isn't that a body they're bringing off now? Down by the hole there. No, no, that isn't a body, Junior. That's a mummy case containing a mummy which belonged to the guy who was wounded. A mummy? Oh, gosh. What would be the one place we'd never think of looking? Uh, uh, what was that, Tracy? Captain, I may be crazy, but come on. Dick, where are you going? I'm going to down to have a look at that mummy. But, Dick, you don't actually think he'd be in there, do you? I don't know, Pat. It's the one place we haven't looked for him. The one place no one would think of looking for him. By heavens, Tracy, I believe you're right. We'll soon know. Here, you. Yeah? Put that mummy case down, will you? Oh, with pleasure. Boy, they sure built these things in the old days. Weighs a ton. All right, boys, put it down. Okay, okay, there it goes. There it goes. There we are. Well, I must say, Tracy, you certainly are thorough. Got to hand it to you. I would never have thought of looking in that mummy case. Well, Rue, we're not sure he's in there. He may not be, you know. Yeah, there's something to that. But I have a hunch, Pat. A hunch that he is. All right, boys, pry off that lid. Okay. 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 Draw your gun, Pat, and stand ready. Right, Dick. You may need it. Is Humi Batik concealed in the mummy case? And supposing he is... Where is the black pearl? A big surprise awaits us, a surprise you won't want to miss for anything. And now stand by for a meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol, brought to you by the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, 
those two nourishing, tasty cereals that are shot from guns. Here's Dick Tracy, Jr., your president now. The meeting will now come to order. And today we have another secret code message for you from Dick Tracy. Have you got your pencil and paper ready to take it down? If not, get them right now so you won't miss Dick's secret message. While you're getting your pencil and paper, I want to report a lot of new promotions to the ranks of sergeant and lieutenant. Congratulations, officers of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. And if you aren't an officer already, start to win your promotion right away. It tells you how in your secret code book. All right, Mr. Quaker Man. Here's the secret code message. You ready, everyone? It's... Prisoner, 20, 6, 10, 16, 3, 21, 17, 16, 20, 8, 16, 3, 8, 18, 15, 4, 12, 21, 15, 13, 9, 14. That's a long one, Junior. I think you better repeat it. Okay. Here it is again. It's prisoner 20, 6, 10, 16, 3, 21, 17, 16, 20, 8, 16, 3, 8, 18, 15, 4, 12, 21, 15, 13, 9, 14. That's real news for you from Dick Tracy, patrol members. Be sure you decode that message. It's important. And with all the big things that are happening, be sure there's some famous Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the pantry so you can get your box tops. Look today to be sure. And if there isn't any, ask Mother to get some at the grocer's, and then you and Mother and Dad can have puffed wheat one day and puffed rice the next for a delicious variety that really brightens up your breakfast. And don't forget those two swell cereals are shot from guns. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure next Monday at this same time. That is all. Welcome back. Well, a dramatic note to end the episode on. And uh, this, of course, ended the week of programming since we started uh, our uh, look at the story uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so this is what uh, kids would uh, turn off the radio and uh, be wondering about uh, as you get ready for Monday. We also get to hear Junior brought properly into the story rather than just as part of the whole uh, code uh, portion of the program. And Junior is a really important character. He was part of Chester Gould, the uh, creator of Dick Tracy. His uh, method of building a comic strip for the whole family, he introduced uh, Junior as a homeless orphan who was actually adopted by Dick Tracy and took on the name of Dick Tracy Jr. And it's interesting to note that this character actually predates Dick Grayson, a.k.a. the first Robin the Boy Wonder. So in many ways, Dick Tracy actually uh, set the stage for things that would come later with uh, kids' side characters and a lot of detective and mystery stories. Well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Lisa, Patreon supporter since April 2016, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Lisa. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for The Man Called X. Next Tuesday, we'll be back with another episode of Dick Tracy. In the meantime, send your comments to... 
Box 13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.